In this video, I will teach you how to make this exact simulation in Blender using the free and included cell fracture add-on. As always, it's going to be quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so let's start off by turning the cube into a perfect sphere. So add a subdivision surface modifier and apply it. Then press tab for edit mode and then press shift alt s then one to turn it into a perfect sphere. And then next, we need to add an add-on, and that's the cell fracture add-on. So go to Edit, Preferences, and then search for cell fracture, and this add-on is included in Blender by default, so it's completely free. And then go to Object, Quick Effects, and then Cell Fracture, and here you have a lot of different settings. And in this case, I'm going to focus on the noise, recursion, and the randomness. So let's increase the noise value to get some variation for the cracks. And then for the recursion, I'm going to set it to one so that we get some smaller pieces. And then for randomness, we can set it to one so that everything gets broken down to smaller pieces. And then once you're done playing around with the different values, you can start the cell fracturing. And after maybe around a minute, you will have the object with a bunch of cracks. So let's save before we continue. Just give it a name and then you can save it wherever you want on the computer, like always. And then we need to delete the outer layer, which is the original object, because that's no longer needed for the rigid body simulation. So press X to delete. And then next, we need to select the pieces and add rigid body physics to them. So we'll select them by pressing B and then go to object, rigid body, and then add active, which will add the rigid body physics to all of the different objects. And then in the rigid body physics settings, I'm going to change the surface response to one for the friction and then set the uh, damping, translation, and rotation to one to limit the movement, as you will see that they will wobble a lot at the end of the simulation. Then just copy from active so that they all get those settings. And then next, to make the simulation look a bit cooler, we can just select the whole thing and then press Shift D to duplicate and then R twice to rotate the objects freely this, Shift D, then R twice. And then we can make a large one at the uh, top. So press uh, Shift D and then S to scale up the object. Then I'm going to press G, then Set to uh, grab it on the Z axis. Okay, and then next we need to add a plane. So Shift A, G then set and then S to scale. And then we of course need to add the rigid body physics as well. So uh, rigid body, passive, because this one is not going to move. And then we can set the collision type to mesh. And then under the rigid body world settings, we can bake the simulation. But uh, right now it does not seem to work, so I just need to adjust the values for the active objects. So I'm going to decrease the damping, translation, and rotation to make sure that they move. And then let's copy from active. So it's very simple to change the physics settings and then copy the changes to the rest of the objects. As you can see, when we play the simulation, it works. So let's bake the whole thing so that we have it saved. So I'm going to say one more time and then bake. And after a uh, few minutes or maybe even an hour of baking, we have the finished simulation. So uh, now I'm going to set up the lighting and the materials. So let's start off by selecting the light source and uh, give the scene some light. I'm going to make it into a sun and set the strength to three and then use cycles 
with a GPU. If you only have a CPU, you can just use the CPU, but it's going to be a bit slower. And then press R twice to rotate the sun freely. And then next, we can add the materials. So I'm just going to add a basic principal shader with a dark color. And then in the render settings, I'm going to make the background transparent so that we can add a background later. Okay. And then we need to add the uh, camera as well. So press Ctrl Alt Nab zero to set the camera to the current point of view. Then press N and lock the camera to view. To improve the quality of the render, we can also increase the number of samples so that we get less noise. And then you can also enable denoising to remove even more noise. And then we can go to the output properties and I'm going to set the resolution to 4K, which is 200%. You can just leave it at 100 if you just want the default resolution. And then you need to select a folder for the final animation, the final images. So just create a new folder wherever you want on the computer and then select the folder and give the folder a name and give the animation a name. And then you can add those PNGs together later. And then after playing around with the colors, we can render the animation. And that's it for this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching and subscribe.